I wish it was warmer out. It's way too cold here. Where'd you go? You okay? I don't think you wanted to become warmer. Why? Don't you remember what happened last time? No, what happened? The PTM. The PTM? Yes, the PTM. The PTM? What's that? The Paleocene Eocene Thermal Maximum. Let's start with a little background on the first half of the- Wait, who are you? I'm a geoscience student who loves to study the PETM. Okay, continue. The PETM occurred about 56 million years ago during the Paleogene period of the Cenozoic era. These are the time increments as described on the geologic time scale. The Paleocene and Eocene are two epochs, as smaller time units during this era. During the Paleocene, the Earth was recovering from the KT extinction, you know, the one that killed the dinosaurs? The PETM occurred in the transition between the two, and the Eocene would be spent recovering from the drastic effects. So what happened? Well, it was a significant increase in global temperature caused by a massive amount of carbon being released into the atmosphere. The main source of this carbon was the North Atlantic Igneous Province, an area of significant volcanic activity. This volcanic activity disrupted the carbon cycle and caused the Earth to go into a greenhouse phase. The global temperature increased by about 6 degrees Celsius. The increase in temperature caused hypoxia and acidity, as well as changing the ideal environment for many deep water marine animals. It also had strange effects on the lives of the flora and fauna on land. As we've seen in today's changing climate, animals and plants learn to adapt when temperatures rise, and by tracking those changes, through the fossil record, we can learn just what the world was like back then. Professor Reichelt's lab is a leaf from a metasequoia tree dated to about 50 million years ago. This leaf was found in what is now Arctic Canada, but when it was growing, the conditions were closer to that of a cool temperate forest. This is a modern metasequoia tree growing and thriving here in Connecticut. The climate we have all come to tolerate here is similar to what the climate was like in Canada during the PETM. The temperature rose so much that the cousins of these beautiful trees were able to grow and take over a large part of northern Canada, which is now home to cold, icy conditions. The animals living in these areas were affected too by the large temperature increase. Researchers at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln have found a link between body size and climate. Using fossils of ancestral horses and other small mammals, they found that body size decreased between 14 to 30 percent as temperatures rose. Scientists think that this change may have been caused by a number of factors like drought or change in diet or an adaptation to allow for more heat dispersion by increasing their surface to volume ratio. Were any other animals affected by the PTM? Yes, deep sea organisms. Like fish? More like plankton. Due to the mass release of carbon from the North Atlantic Large Igneous Province, the oceans became incredibly acidic, which killed off much of the deep marine microorganisms. This can be tracked via changes in chemical compositions of shells and other carbonate remnants. Ah, that makes sense. So what was the North Atlantic Large Igneous Province, and how did it drive such significant warming of Earth's climate? Call dibs on talking about this. First, let's talk about what a large igneous province is and the connection between Earth's climate and magmatic systems. Now, this is my area of expertise. Earth's surface may have been hot during the PETM, but let's first go to someplace much hotter a large igneous province. These systems are often situated at divergent plate boundaries or areas where a mantle plume is rising beneath the surface. At these sites, massive accumulations of igneous rocks form in the crust and then erupt to the surface. As rifting of Pangaea initiated, the crust above the Iceland hotspot was stretched, leading to the formation of the North Atlantic igneous province. It was massive, extending over 1.3 million kilometers squared in area and generating a staggering 6.6 .6 million kilometers cubed volume of igneous rocks. Well, lava is hot, but I can't quite grasp how this warm climate so much on a global scale. That's because volcanic systems are important sources of carbon for our atmosphere. Magmatic systems store a significant amount of carbon dioxide, a greenhouse gas responsible for trapping heat in the atmosphere. During volcanic eruptions, carbon previously stored deep in the earth is released into the atmosphere. Today, global volcanic emissions are estimated to be 0.26 billion metric tons per year, which is low relative to anthropogenic CO2 emissions from fuel combustion, estimated at 32.3 billion metric tons per year. Constraining the magnitude and rates of carbon released by the extensive magmatism of the North Atlantic Igneous Province is an ongoing problem. An estimated 2,000 gigatons of CO2 total could have been released into the atmosphere, sparking a series of feedbacks between Earth's systems leading to rapid and substantial climate warming. This occurred over the course of 15 to 20,000 years, with an average increase in temperature by 42 degrees Fahrenheit. But how do we know that the Paleocene Eocene Thermal Maximum even occurred? Proxy data? Wait, why are you here? I love proxy data. Now let's continue. Proxy data is the preserved physical characteristics of an environment that can stand in for direct measurements. No direct measurements? Well, time travel has not yet been invented, so direct measurements are unavailable at this time. There are many forms of proxy records. These include biological proxy records, physical proxy records, and chemical proxy records. Plant fossils, pollen, and faunal data are great examples of biological proxy data. Sediments are a very popular form of physical proxy records, and chemical proxy records are normally derived from isotopic data. That's great and all, but what are some specific examples of evidence from the PETM? Well, you know nanofossil assemblages? Well, that's a great example of the PETM. 
A famous study of the PETM that discusses these nanofossil assemblages is Shatsky Rise in the Pacific Ocean. There is amazing preservation of organic compounds, specifically algae and bacteria, which helps to demonstrate the anoxic environment. The PETM resulted in one of the largest sea life mass extinctions, and Shatsky Rise helps to solidify this claim. The rate in which sediment was deposited is some physical evidence for this event. The warmer temperatures resulted in both higher seasonality and epicidicity. This resulted in changes of runoff in many sediment cores. There was more terrestrial runoff in nearshore marine sediments, reflecting a more arid environment because of increased temperature. The most commonly discussed evidence for the PETM is chemical proxies, specifically carbon isotopes. Often this is gathered from deep sea drilling cores and organisms within it, like planktic foraminifera. The large shift towards negative delta 13c values are a result of an increase of CO2 in the atmosphere. The more negative the values are, the warmer the environment is. This supports the concept of the PETM, seeing as how scientists currently believe volcanic explosions, or methane hydrates released from ocean sediments, is why the PETM occurred. I get it! I can even connect the PETM to modern day. The drastic effects of the PETM are often compared to the rapid climate changes occurring today. It provides insight into the long-term effects of a greenhouse climate. Many oceanic and continental environments were changed due to the PETM, and the effects are well recorded across all environments. And this paleo temperature has been modeled and correlated with many trends found across the globe. The potential correlation between the PTM and the current climate change trends grows stronger as the Earth today grows warmer. As we record, organisms facing extinction circumstances, it can be compared to their relatives 56 million years ago that suffered the same fate. It took hundreds of thousands of years to recover from the rapid increase of temperature over a few thousand years. We should take note of the changes that happened in the past so we don't suffer the same fate. No, you don't want it to get warmer. It's not like Cancun. 